to the most photographed, most beloved, most visited stargazing place in the world, the Griffith Observatory. It's changed quite a bit recently. It's undergone a four-year, $93 million expansion and renovation. And yet, from the outside, it looks very much the same. I'm Leonard Nimoy, and I love this place. I'm going to take you through it to show you what's new. But first, I want to tell you the story of this amazing building. It all started when a remarkable man looked through a remarkable telescope. This is the telescope at Mount Wilson, perched high above the L.A. Basin. And this is the man who would look through it. His first name was the same as his last, Griffith J. Griffith. As a young man, he emigrated from Wales to seek his fortune in America. He lived in New York and San Francisco, and by age 32, had made his first million investing in silver mines. When Griffith moved to Los Angeles, he invested in land, buying over 4,000 acres of a rugged, hilly tract called Rancho Los Feliz. He believed L.A. would one day become a world-class city and that it deserved a world-class public park. So, in an act of great civic generosity, he donated most of his estate to the city of Los Angeles to create Griffith Park. It was the turn of the 20th century, and Griffith, like all of America, was fascinated with the new discoveries of science. Griffith was interested in astronomy, and he got the chance to go up to Mount Wilson, to the Mount Wilson Observatory, really the, the most cutting-edge research observatory in the world at the time. And he was able to look through the 60-inch telescope, then the, the biggest telescope in the world, and he was amazed and profoundly transformed by what he saw. And he was moved to reply after looking through that eyepiece, if everyone could look through that telescope, it would change the world. Griffith felt so strongly about sharing this experience that before he died, he gave a $100,000 gift to the city of Los Angeles to build a science hall and observatory. But before it could be built, the design was powerfully influenced by a very earthly event. The disastrous Long Beach quake of 1933. When we look at the original drawings, we see terracotta tile on the outside of the building. The domed roof is also made of tile. It's a very classic California building from the 1920s. After the Long Beach earthquake, uh, it was recognized that there was considerable damage to what are known as masonry structures. And the idea was to make it a much simpler building. What you ended up with was walls that in many places were a foot thick of solid poured concrete with extensive steel rebar running through it. As a result, the observatory is probably one of the safest places in Southern California to be in the event of an earthquake. At present, there are several hundred people gathered here in the planetarium proper. Griffith Observatory officially opened its doors to the public on May 14th, 1935. This building is a noble structure, marvelously placed, poised above the dwellings of men, with a magical carpet of city lights below, and yearning to look into the sky. There to gain a truer perspective of their own significance in the general scheme of things. During World War II, soldiers were stationed there to look out for enemy ships and planes that might attack Los Angeles. Fortunately, that never happened. After the war, the observatory became the home of big dreams. It was a place to learn what the world's leading scientists were thinking about space travel. One of the best examples of this is, in fact, the first director's transformation of planetarium programming. And that was Dr. Dinsmore Alter and his interest in traveling to the moon long before we ever actually did that prompted him to have contrived special effects projectors that created zoom effects and such that gave the audience the feeling that they were leaving the earth traveling through space 
and they'd get close to the moon. Then they'd land on the moon, and they would be in the environment of, of the lunar mountains and, and craters. Well, this was, in, in fact, an extraordinary development. In the process of showing visitors the stars, Griffith's observatory became one itself. <laughs> its first appearance in Hollywood movies was, oddly enough, as an empire 25,000 feet below the surface of the Earth. For many days before the end of our Earth, we will look into the night sky and notice a star. As the star approaches us, Jim Star. The observatory's big break came in Rebel Without a Cause, starring James Dean, where it was for the first time portrayed as what it actually was, an observatory. Please, we'll turn. Some of the just thinking that once you've been up there, you know you've been someplace. In a burst of gas and fire. Over 200 films, TV shows, and music videos have been shot at Griffith Observatory. It certainly is a lot of switches. Yeah, quite intricate. Despite its willingness to play along in movie make-believe, the observatory is a place where people have always turned to find out what's real. Griffith Planetarium was, you know, the preferred planetarium, was the one which the Apollo crews used most to become familiar with the sky and the navigation stars. By the end of the 20th century, over 70 million visitors had literally loved this place to pieces. It desperately needed expansion and renovation. So in January of 2002, these well-worn doors were closed for improvement. The good news was that the building was very much intact. The bad news was that it had a lot of deferred maintenance and just wear and tear after 70 years and 70 million visitors. One part of the building that was in need of serious attention was a giant planetarium dome. It's a copper dome over a concrete shell. And one of the great challenges of the renovation and restoration was that that dome leaked very badly. There was no waterproof membrane between the concrete and the copper. It was an engineering feat in itself to figure out how to replace that copper without attaching to the dome as we worked from the top down. The solution was to build scaffolding inside the planetarium up to the ceiling. It then emerged through a hole in the roof and hovered over the outside of the dome like an umbrella. Workers could then climb up to remove the copper panels, waterproof the dome, and replace the copper cover. The observatory needed more room, but adding on to the classic lines of the old building would destroy its look. The only option was to build underground. When I think about the construction of the Griffith Observatory, there's, there's three challenges. One is the access. There's only one access point, and so in sequencing the work is very important because you don't want to trap yourself in. The second challenge here is the excavation. We're talking about 30,000 cubic yards of dirt. And when you dig that deep, there are always surprises, especially in earthquake country. We excavated down far enough, 30 feet below the, the front lawn, that we exposed the toe of this, this fall plain. Some of the hillside had sloped and moved outwards into the excavation. We had to immediately shore and buttress up against it to avoid the surrounding dirt from collapsing in on the excavation. As the hole was being stabilized, another extraordinary feat of engineering was taking place under the observatory. In order to tunnel beneath it, this solid concrete structure had to be lifted off its foundation. You jack it up through hydraulic jacks and you're lifting up the building to a point where it's weightless. It kept us awake at night because this is all based on theoretical values. It's all theory. It's not an exact science. Fortunately, the perfect amount of force was used and the building didn't buckle or crack. Holding it, the building up at zero gravity allows us to go underneath, excavate an entire floor level, 
create the space that we needed to for this expansion. One of the other great challenges was to create a huge underground exhibit space free of support columns that might block visitors' views of the exhibits. It really wasn't just a matter of building the hole and then covering it up with a roof. This is a, a topping over this hole that needs to be able to accept the weight of a fire truck coming in and getting into the building. So there was an enormous structural challenge. The solution was to pour gigantic concrete support beams in place and then to pour a thick roof on top. This required a continuous round-the-clock concrete pour until it was finished. What's interesting is that you look at all of this now and it looks like it was the easiest thing in the world to do. It always existed that way. And I guess that's the, the talent of the expanded team to allow the visitor to think that it was as easy as that, but it wasn't. Okay, it's time for that tour, I promise you. You know what's exciting about this place? Everything here is made to stimulate the imagination to give us new ways to understand our universe, starting here at the Foucault Pendulum. It demonstrates something that's very difficult to prove in any other physical way, that we are standing on a rotating planet. There are some places on Earth where this demonstration doesn't work. Can you guess where they are?